Hello everyone, Just Gorn here and welcome to this special little video all about butterfly houses. Of course today the new Grasslands Animal Pack release and one of the things it brings us is butterflies so I wanted to give you guys some inspiration to build the butterfly houses of your dreams. So I have 10 butterfly houses prepared for you, uh, 5 from big EAZA uh, zoos and 5 from either smaller zoos or botanical gardens here in the Netherlands. So let's have a look at all of them. So starting off we have the mangrove building of Burgers Zoo in the Netherlands. This is an amazing, huge, domed, um, yeah, tropical house, basically. Uh, all themed around the mangroves, around, ooh, I forgot which area of the Caribbean sort of area. <laughs> and um, starting off here at the entrance, we have our first kind of staples of butterfly houses. Uh, the first of which is this um, sea cow over here, which is actually uh, a hair dryer or a hand dryer, which you can use to heat up your glasses and uh, have them not fog up as you enter this tropical house. It's not, not necessarily a butterfly house thing, uh, but more a tropical house thing. But of course, butterfly houses are often tropical houses, so you will see them a lot today <laughs> in the various um, butterfly houses that we're going to be looking at. So yeah, that is one thing as well. Uh, there is going to be a lot of overlap um, between these butterfly houses because, of course, they are all butterfly houses. They are going to have similar things. And I think that's really interesting to, le uh, to see what are the similarities and what are the differences. So let's look at the mangrove in particular here. Um, of course, this is not just a butterfly house. It is a complete ecosystem sort of thing of, uh, of these mangroves. So we have exhibits for crabs. Uh, we have <laughs> in the middle a huge lake for sea cows. Uh, and what surprised me is that there's a whole bunch of other animals, like all of these bird species, um, populating this dome, um, which apparently is not an issue to the butterflies. Um, of course, some birds will eat butterflies. And from what I've read on the social media of Burgers Zoo, um, the birds would actually eat the butterflies if not for the fact that they are uh, single sex uh, groups. Uh, when the birds will mate, that's when they start to like really hunger for proteins and stuff and they will start eating more bugs. Uh, but because there's only either males or females, I'm not sure, uh, in this house, um, the butterflies are totally safe. Um, I just realized there's actually quite a lack of butterflies. Ah, there they are. Um, we started off with some butterflies as we entered, but they are in the entire dome. Uh, and it's just a really cool experience. I love big dome-like tropical places like this. Just a complete ecosystem for you to explore um, and roam around in. And this building is no exception. It looks absolutely phenomenal. Um, of course, you have all sorts of things. And here we come to our next um, butterfly house staple. It is the pupae um, chamber, I guess. Uh, in Dutch, it's called a poppenkast, which is kind of the same word for a puppet show, which is kind of funny. Um, but yeah, of course, a, a pop would be the pupae, and uh, a cost is a cabinet. So it's a pupae cabinet, basically. Um, and of course, also a staple for <laughs> butterfly houses or just zoos uh, is the signage uh, listing all of the different species that can be found. Um, yeah, if, if you don't have that, then it's kind of weird. <laughs> but yeah, just look at all of these things, the fruit hanging from the trees. Um, I didn't really see any of these kind of staple butterfly house feeders yet uh, in here. Maybe I forgot to point them out, but we'll definitely see more of them later. Uh, we also just saw a little caterpillar on a leaf. That's really cool about this area. Uh, I think we went here, it was like spring. Yeah, it was spring. Um, so I'm not sure if that's actually necessary for it to be spring for the butterflies to be reproducing and stuff like that. But um, yeah, in a big ecosystem like this, you could actually just find caterpillars and stuff around, which is really cool. But yeah, that's it for burgers. We're moving on to our next zoo. Um, I'm kind of alternating between the bigger ESEA zoos and the smaller ones. Um, this is kind of a medium <laughs> zoo, I want to say. It's, it's quite a small zoo in terms of animal collection. But uh, it is pretty large in terms of like footprint and the gardens in here. But we are at the Orchideahoeven, which is, yeah, 
a kind of a tropical garden, uh, lots of greenhouses intertwined, and we can see another a hand dryer over here for your uh, for cleaning your lens. Uh, we can also see uh, some house rules over here, which is very important. Um, it mentions the temperature difference between this room and the rest of the zoo. It mentions that the butterflies might be sitting on the floor, so you need to be mindful of where you step uh, and stuff like that. So also, of course, don't touch the butterflies is the main one that you will see in these uh, sort of houses. But just look at this butterfly garden. Uh, emphasis on the garden part. That is the big thing about butterfly gardens. They are, of course, gardens. So you will see these beautifully planted areas. Um, those are definitely really common. What's really cool to see here as well is on the ceiling, you can see these kind of circular spiral things. They're not really spirals. They're just many circles combined. Uh, those are heaters for, for tropical houses. You often see them. Also in here, we can see mixed species. We have some iguanas, and we'll see some birds later as well in here. And we have these awesome waterfalls. There's actually two of these. We'll see the second one a little bit later. Um, also, the elephant in the room, <laughs> I should probably point out, is that I went here uh, pretty recently, like, uh, like less than a week ago, or probably when this video comes out, exactly a week ago. Um, so they were... Uh, very festive. It was a very festive zoo. There were Christmas lights and Christmas music everywhere. So I'm probably going to have to mute this video uh, in particular because uh, most Christmas music is licensed. But again, over here, we can see the pupae chambers, cabinets, <laughs> whatever. Um, yeah, definitely something that we will see in pretty much every butterfly garden in one way or another. But yeah, we're just going to come to the other side um, of this garden. Uh, ooh, look, there's a butterfly. <laughs> uh, come to the other side of this garden because uh, it is actually so much bigger than I expected. And here we can again see those fans spinning around those spirals. Those spirals are basically just coils of wire that heat up. And of course the fans will then blow the hot air um, or blow air past it, heating it up and uh, creating the nice tropical climate. And as we can see over here once again, we have some birds, which I'm guessing <laughs> are no problem for the butterflies. Another really cool thing about uh, this area is this, well, this, there's the cave over here. And I'm not sure if these chairs and stuff are always there, like ready for weddings or whatever event, uh, or if there just happened to be a wedding sort of thing going on while we were here. Um, it kind of seemed to be that way. <laughs> Um, but it is super cool to have like an event space like that in a butterfly garden. I mean, how much more magical can you get <laughs> with an event like that? Uh, just absolutely gorgeous. Also over here, there's this beautiful kind of sectioned off area. We have a just top down view of the entire garden. It is so cool. Honestly, this, this garden in particular almost gave me like Burger's Bush vibes in terms of just exploring this jungle-like space in a way. It was super, super cool. Of course, Burgers Bush is way bigger and way more complex than this, but for, for a smaller zoo like this, it is absolutely phenomenal. I loved it here. But yeah, uh, I think we're getting close to the end of this garden. Oh yeah, one more thing. Um, another thing that I've seen in many a garden <laughs> is actually the, the space where they um, breed or uh, yeah I guess breed uh, the butterflies so over here there is a separate greenhouse in which they're breeding um, the butterflies so you can see more of those like cabinets uh, also just a, a kitchen of course and um, but it, what's kind of special is usually you're not able to go into these spaces so that's what I thought was really cool here is I actually just have it open for guests um, there's signage here, like where do our butterflies come from? Um, oftentimes this is islands like Costa Rica where they um, also breed butterflies. They uh, take the eggs or the caterpillars or the pupies uh, and they box them up and send them to butterfly houses like this one. Um, and just like every week or so they get a shipment of new pupies that they can put down and the butterflies will come out and populate the garden. And here you can see kind of that happening. So these um, cabinets will have eggs in them uh, that will eventually hatch. And uh, yeah, 
eventually turn into butterflies, which is really cool. Of course, butterflies don't have that long of a lifespan. I actually wonder how Planet Zoo is going to deal with that. Um, usually they only live for like a week or two. Um, so that's why they have to ke ke keep getting these continuous shipments because it's not always possible to breed them and you want to make sure to have your house is nicely populated. So over here, um, speaking of the next house that we're visiting, we are in Antwerp. This is the zoo of Antwerp, which have a butterfly house inside of kind of a classical building, which is just really, really unique and super cool. I absolutely love this. Just look at the, <laughs> look at that building. It's so, so weird and unique. Um, and here we have another kind of butterfly house staple. We kind of saw it in the mangrove, although back there, I'm not sure if it was actually meant as decoration or actually for this purpose. Uh, but you'll often see uh, mirrors at the entrance and exit of butterfly houses with a little sign asking people to please check if there's any butterflies that have landed on you. <laughs> like, has any better butterfly landed on you? Can you please check and make sure that you don't, you know, take any butterflies with you out of the garden because they will die, uh, which would not be <laughs> very great. So yeah, that's, that's another butterfly house staple, but just Oh, look at this rock work. It is so cool. The only the only bummer is that there is actually a staircase that goes up there, um, but it's blocked off for visitors. Uh, another bit of a bummer is you might see a, a bit of a lack of butterflies in here at the moment. Um, I did go here during the winter, uh, and this garden in particular was uh, in kind of a winter rest. So a lot less butterflies, a lot lower temperatures, um, just kind of have everything tie out uh, until the temperatures are high enough again. So it doesn't cost a bajillion dollars just to uh, heat up this room. Um, this is the case for a couple of the butterfly gardens uh, we will see in this video. Like I was there in the winter and there was a winter rest. Some of them I was there in the winter and it was just up and running as usual. Um, it really just depends on the house I guess. But yeah. Oh, those by the way, you can see those are kind of these staple butterfly house feeders. Just little plastic plates uh, with some flowers drawn onto it, which have these little tubes with like sugar water or nectar uh, in it that the butterflies will uh, drink from. Now this right over here is super, super cool. This is one of the coolest, um, one of the simplest but coolest things uh, or like education bits that I've seen in these butterfly houses. It is actually just a physical book, which has pages you can turn and every page uh, is like a different color and it shows um, which butterflies of that color um, yeah, exist or can be found here. Uh, I'm not quite sure. Um, but yeah, it's the, it's the great Find Your Butterfly book, which is really cool. Uh, over here as well, <clears throat> we have our pupae cabinet. <laughs> More of a cabinet than any others we've seen so far. Um, but yeah, through the mesh, you can see the pupaes and stuff. So yeah, excellent. Absolutely essential to any per, uh, butterfly house. I do hope that somehow we get a item for that uh, in the DLC. I'm recording this, if you haven't noticed already, uh, I'm recording this before the DLC comes out, so I have no idea yet um, what to expect. But yeah, this is just, I, I love how much of a just beautiful garden this is, while at the same time, when you look up, it's just, this <laughs> this classical building it's super weird but cool that's what i love about classical zoos it's just such a unique thing it's not always for the better but in this case uh, butterflies are not going to care if they're in an <laughs> in a greenhouse or in this sort of thing so over here some more educations um these are search tips so how do you find butterflies like look around look to the ground so stuff like that um, over here, we are at the Botanical Garden of Amsterdam. So this is a botanical garden, um, but oftentimes you will find butterfly houses in botanical gardens, and this one is no exception. Um, it is just a very small greenhouse with basically two paths. Uh, like it, it's, a, it's, it's a greenhouse with one planter down the middle, two planters on the side, so you have like two paths going in between those. Um, over here, I think this is kind of like the breeding area. You can see a bunch of caterpillars on these plants. Um, but yeah, this, this butterfly house is very, very simple. Uh, there is not a lot going on. But it's not there to 
be like it, it's a botanical garden <laughs> not a not a zoo or a butterfly house in particular and uh, i'm having a lot of these stop words but anyway again we can see uh, the pupae uh, thing i do hope that i'm pronouncing it correctly this time when i did the video on small costa rica uh, I, keep, I think i kept saying poopy <laughs> but i think it's pupae and i think that's correct and i do hope so so anyway um yeah you could see those feeders in action there earlier um and then other than that there is not a lot here uh, other than just flowers things for the butterflies to interact with naturally um but yeah that is it we can see another one of those i think breeding areas with the plant yeah Nothing too special here, so we are going to move on to the next garden, and I forgot which one that is. It might be... Waltlands! Okay, so here we are at Waltlands Adventure Zoo in Emma in the Netherlands. Um, all of these except for Antwerp are in the Netherlands. Um, but here we have the Jungola. Um, Waltlands is kind of divided into three main areas, I think. One of which is the Jungola. Uh, again, we have a blow dryer over here. Uh, in the shape of this bird thing um, and as we come inside we have a wonderfully themed area just beautiful again uh, oh yeah this is really cool about wildlands uh, their education signs are these books um, but again we have some enclosures inside of the greenhouse which is really cool uh, in this case it is an enclosure for some kind of turtle I'm not sure which species from the top of my head. Uh, we could see it on the side earlier, so if you go back, you could check. Um, and there's also some uh, African dwarf crocodiles here. Um, but yeah, one thing Wildlands definitely excels at is just the theming. These temple uh, constructions are absolutely beautiful. And the garden itself is pretty nice as well. Uh, the only like, complaint I had about this area in particular is that it was pretty straight, like... The uh, exhibit over there is quite square, and then you have this kind of square. Yeah, it's all pretty square, <laughs> basically. Um, but it does look really, really cool. And uh, yeah, just lots of education about uh, what flowers eat, how they interact, uh, what flowers eat, <laughs> what butterflies eat, and how they um, interact with flowers and stuff. And yeah, there's a ton of different species in here. Uh, just super, super cool. Um, also, we can see up there, there's a little path, which we'll check out in a second. Um, but yeah, here we can see the broad snouted caiman, or the African dwarf caiman, uh, as they're also called. Uh, here we are uh, at that top level, um, where we have even more butterflies. Of course, they can go wherever they want. Uh, what's interesting over here is we can also see kind of the uh, heating system in the corner over there. Uh, looks very different than what we saw in the other zoos. Um, but yeah, up here we can see a bit of the construction the habitat from a different view. Look at how many butterflies there are, <laughs> it's so gorgeous. But yeah, every part of this is themed and it looks super, super cool. Look at those samples. Um, also over here, another exhibit kind of like in the middle of this pillar. Uh, it had a little turtle inside, but you can't tell from this angle. Um, yeah, I think that's really cool how how these gardens have like uh, other stuff in it. It's just so cool. And here we can see all of the different species in here, by the way, if you were wondering. Uh, that was also cool, just that one branch completely littered with butterflies. Um, and here we have our uh, pupae cabinet. Uh, I think this one is not real. I think this is kind of like a faux faux. Pupae cabinet is just shows all of the different pupae for the butterflies that are in here. Uh, and is also, of course, as Waltlands does it, heavily themed. Uh, and yeah, here you can see some signage about the different stages of the lifespan of the butterfly. The caterpillar, the pupae, and then the butterfly itself. But yeah, that is pretty much it for Waltlands. Uh, we are going to go through this door and then we will end up at the next zoo which will be 
um, well, not a zoo apparently, <laughs> whoops, uh, as we follow Lukoshi doing his grand entrance with the exaggerated swagger of a pianist, um, <laughs> we are going into the um, butterfly house of the botanical garden of Utrecht. Um, again, much like the one in uh, Amsterdam, it's just two paths with like a planter uh, in the middle and on the sides. Um, it was very crowded in here, so I did not actually manage to record that much. Um, where this one differs from the one in um, Amsterdam is that it is not like a single small greenhouse. It is actually part of a larger complex. Um, but yeah, it has all of the butterfly garden staples, like the poopy. Uh, there we go again. The pupy <laughs> um, cabinet over there. Uh, we can find caterpillars strewn about the garden, which is just really cool. Um, but yeah, this one was super, like, tightly packed <laughs> with all of the plants and stuff. And, uh, because it was a little crowded, it was quite difficult to film and stuff. But, um, of course, over here we have all of the different species inside. Um, uh, look at that one. That one looks cool. I didn't see it, which is a bummer. But, yeah. What flies there? Uh, what butterfly is that? But that was pretty much it for... Utrecht, uh, we are now going to another big dome. Uh, we are at Amazonica in Rotterdam Zoo, uh, Blydorp, which is, uh, yeah, as I said, another one of those big domes. Um, basically just a tropical ecosystem. And here we can see uh, the best example of those um, mirrors. Uh, be wary of uh, stowaways, I guess is the best way to translate that. Um, yeah, the, the mirror tells you to be mindful that there might be butterflies on you, and if there are, please <laughs> go back into the garden and uh, drop them there. We could also see a uh, glasses heater. Uh, again, um, me and Eben like to call it the taper thing, because uh, uh, Burger Zoo had one of them that was shaped as a taper. Uh, but that one's not featured in this video, because that was at the jungle. Uh, Burgers bush, I should say. But yeah, <laughs> enough about burgers. We are at Blydorp here. Um, as you can see in the reflection, these triangle-shaped things form the dome that we are in. You could see it earlier as well, and in the sky. <laughs> um, but this is just a massive kind of jungle, tropical area. Um, it is also a botanical garden, as this um, plaque over here informs us. Um, the NP garden means for, uh, ooh, what does it stand for again? It's like National Plant Collection, I think. So, uh, I think both Blydorp, Artis, and a bunch of other zoos, uh, as well as Botanical Gardens, of course, um, together form like the National Plant Collection, and uh, together they have like a bunch of plant species. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how it works, I'm not a botanist expert. <laughs> But yeah, just like the mangrove, um, this is just a massive area to walk around in, <clears throat> to get lost in. And it has all of the things you will find in a butterfly garden. Oh, look at that. So cool. Uh, also, over here we do have a bunch more education. Uh, so far we haven't seen that much, like, very special butterfly education. Um, but over here we have a cool sign where you can flip the butterflies and I think it's all about looking at uh, what a butterfly looks like when it has its wings spread or when it has it, them closed. You can see stuff about their special tongue, uh, about their eyesight over here. Um, and yeah, there's a bunch of videos that you can play all about uh, different facts about butterflies. There's a lot to learn about, and there's a lot of ways, of course, you can teach people that. Uh, over here, we have our staple kind of breeding area, and uh, the pupae chamber as well in a second. Yep, over here, this is where they're breeding butterflies. So these uh, small containers is where they would put the plants with the caterpillars on them. And over here, we have our pupaes. Behind the pupaes, we can also see Kind of a kitchen area, which is where they're uh, growing the plants and breeding the caterpillars and stuff like that. And uh, we can also see some of the butterflies are actually kind of going out of their um, pupae over here, which is super cool to actually 
kind of witness this one in particular super cool and yeah too bad my camera is focusing on the kitchen only so look at that Woo! it's a kitchen <laughs> but yeah amazing garden oh yeah also we haven't really seen much of that yet just big plates of fruits and stuff you will find uh, for the butterflies to to munch on and over here we have the exit awesome decoration with the um, river lilies another thing that I don't really have footage of because they're often missing and um, but you, what you'll often find in uh, gardens like this is like a little poster which has all of the butterflies in the garden on it for little kids to like go around the garden with and like check off which butterflies they've seen to see if they spot them all uh, yeah I don't have any footage of that but that is a very common thing that you could think about adding somehow like adding a holder for those posters um, but anyway, next garden, <laughs> we are have been here for a while, you can see the entrance just now. Uh, this is Papiliorama, uh, a butterfly garden only, it's, it's just that, uh, the entire facility is just a butterfly garden. Um, sadly, uh, this is one of those gardens that was in winter stop, so all of the butterflies were kind of just sitting around. We also found a couple of uh, deceased ones, but uh, yeah. It's just, it's the winter stop, they're not repopulating the garden or anything, they're just waiting for it to get a little warmer again um, and then open up again in the new year. But we were allowed to go inside and just look around, see the garden, which in itself is pretty beautiful. I love the, uh, I love the path, kind of like the, the path from the Europac. <laughs> and they have a bunch of these little bridges that go over um, a small little water stream around the garden. Um, but yeah, just beautiful tropical plants all around and um, yeah over here we can see I think that one is the, is not with us anymore uh, I'm afraid um, but yeah we can see a little bit of the backstage over here as well as an alive butterfly Ooh, look at him um, and a bunch of education uh, of course being a butterfly only facility you would expect to have quite a bit of education about the butterflies um, or in this case insects in general it was talking about like fossilized insects this was really cool this is basically just a computer over here and you have this little red ball and uh, that you can uh, move to select stuff and then there's a green button and um, that you can use to click and it's basically just a computer and it has a little question about butterflies and then it shows a little video i'm not 100 percent sure why like i just i just answered the question correctly and now it's playing a video that is explaining the answer but I already knew the answer, so why am I getting a video about it? I'm not. A, I'm a little unsure about <laughs> whether that was all going right. But we have these cool, like, not miniatures, but like macroatures, I guess, uh, about different things like plants, uh, butterfly parts. This is the breeding area, uh, of course, in the uh, when the garden is in season. That's where you would find the caterpillars and stuff eating on plants. Here's some education about eggs. Here's some education about the pupies and what they look like and how they're camouflaged. Really cool to see that. I just love how they're just pinned to stuff. Uh, imagine if Planet Zoo gave us a little pin, <laughs> pin item. What crazy things would we make with that? But yeah, you can see um, receptors of the plants, and macro, macro, which are, is that how you would say that? <laughs> it's a larger scale model of something. Um, here's also a flower, and you can kind of see where uh, the butterflies would like eat from it, I guess. Uh, you can also see some enlarged flowers, see what that looks like. It's pretty cool. Uh, I didn't really take the time to read everything, I'm gonna be completely honest, um, but it was all pretty cool to see. This one I really liked, it shows like how the wings of a butterfly are built up out of these little um, scales, basically. Uh, and you also have these microscopes that let you see an actual butterfly wing up close. And you can actually see all of those skills on there, which is really, really cool. We'll actually see that again at another zoo in a moment. Uh, I think it might be the next one or the one after. Uh, but yeah, it's really cool. Wait, I'm actually not sure if there's going to be a one after that. Uh, so it's probably the next one. Uh, oh yeah, that one, the rotating butterflies, is meant to show you how the uh, butterflies like change uh, when in different lighting conditions 
And this area is also pretty cool. Uh, it shows how, I think, I'm not actually sure what that means. It's just lighting up the equator. But this over here shows like how butterflies have like influenced us humans, like culturally, uh, which I think is a really clever like bit of education uh, to include. I thought that was really cool. And of course, all of the species in here. But yeah, that is Papiliorama. Uh, it's a pretty nice garden if you're ever in the area, uh, go in the summer. There's also another zoo nearby, so it's quite a worthwhile trip, I think. Haven't been able to go to the other zoo yet, but I hope to <laughs> uh, soon, maybe in the next summer. But here we are at what I think is our last uh, big zoo garden, like ESEA zoo garden. Uh, this one is of the Zoo of Amsterdam artists, and this is just once again... Uh, a really lovely garden where we can see all of our <laughs> butterfly house staples like these little plates this one actually quite simple it just has colors not even like a flower pattern on there but yeah those plastic trays with like nectar in it we can also see fruit has been hung around uh, maybe a bit too long over there um we can see a stag is going down that's where we'll go at the end because yeah this is actually a pretty interesting garden it basically has it's on a slope so right now we're at the top and you can see like it very gradually slopes downwards as we get to like the other entrance. But yeah, over here we can see some lovely gardens. We can see them. These ones don't even have flowers printed on them. It's just holes in a, in a thing. Uh, and yeah, our plates of fruit uh, we will see uh, as we have seen in several of these gardens. But yeah. There's not a lot to say anymore, like it's, it's, yeah, you can see the, the comparisons, you can see the differences, um, it's just really cool. <laughs> I, I really do like Butterfly Gardens, so I've, yeah, I actually didn't realize that I had already visited like 10 of them, but here we are, <laughs> making a compilation of 10 Butterfly Gardens in no particular order. I, I didn't think I've mentioned that, but yeah, I did not want to make like a top 10 Butterfly Gardens, because I hate ranking stuff. Uh, I learned from the Red Panda video <laughs> that uh, I'm, I'm bad at ranking things and I will always regret my decisions afterwards. So, not doing that again. Here's just <laughs> 10 Butterfly Gardens. Enjoy. Be inspired. Um, yeah, of course, because this area slopes down here, we have a little grate at the end uh, where the water will collect. And here we have a little staff door. Which is also blocked off by those little um, plastic things, <laughs> curtains, <laughs> um, to make sure that even when employees are entering or exiting, nothing escapes. Hello there. <laughs> they were doing a, a slight reconstruction there at the end, but uh, yeah, oh, wonderful little waterfall. And as we turn around over here, we have one of the butterfly garden staples that we missed. The PUP chamber, or container, or cabinet, or however we want to call it. There's probably a word for it. Um, but what Artis also has is a bunch of education over here. Um, we can see, of course, the scales in the wings, very enlarged. We can see all sorts of things. Uh, of course, this is a bit higher budget than what we saw at Papiliorama. Um, but it is also kind of a different take. Like less of those um, macro chairs <laughs> I'm still gonna call them um, and just yeah it's a lot more modern but a lot more sleek and what's really cool over here we can see uh, the kind of breeding area and we can see these big big butterflies over here and they are really really cool uh, but as we zoom out we can see a bit of that room uh, that they're breeding them in also um, like Breeding is not the word you use when you're talking about plants. There are growing plants in there as well. This is what I thought was really cool. You can actually see the entire butterfly and then you have this little magnifying glass to take a closer look at the wings and such. I thought that was really neat. You can like slide it around, make it a bit more interactive. Like it's just little simple things like that that just make things like this interactive. It's really cool. And there we had a kit that jumped in front of me so i couldn't look at the microscope sadly um but yeah you have more of those little slidey slidey magnifying glasses i think they're really cool i'm a really big fan 
So yeah, really cool interactive little table over here to learn about the butterflies. But that's really much it. We are looking at our last um, butterfly house today. This is Klein Costa Rica. Um, of course, we've already uh, made a video about this one, so you can uh, click the link somewhere <laughs> right now uh, to view that. But it had a couple of unique things, like this little cabinet over here showed you uh, nocturnal butterflies just kind of lying there. Uh, so you could view them, even though you're never going to see them during the day, which is pretty cool. Uh, and yeah, we have all of our staple things, like these little plastic table things, which we'll probably have inside of the exhibit in one way or another. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> we have, uh, of course, plates of fruit, as I mentioned. You see those a lot as well. I'm not sure what those pallets are. That's pretty interesting. Uh, and yeah, also, again, uh, enclosures inside of the butterfly house, even though this is a very small zoo uh, slash butterfly house. Um, still uh, got some room to put a bearded uh, no, not a bearded. Yeah, yeah, bearded dragon enclosure in there. Um, yeah, the ce in the ceiling we could also see those same little heaters that we saw at the Orchideehoeve, uh, and we have our pupae container over here. But that is it. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you got some uh, nice insights into building your own butterfly houses in Planet Zoo. Hope you enjoyed. Have fun with the DLC. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.